All right, so I had a request to make a video on how to change the nozzle on an any cubic Cobra Go. So this is going to be the first time that I have removed a nozzle on either of my printers. They're both still running on the original nozzles, but uh, one day it was going to have to happen. And if this actually helps someone out, I'm happy to do it. Uh, any any cubic Cobra Go, they were kind enough to supply a spare nozzle and so I took a stainless steel nut and I verified that it is an M6 thread so that was one of the questions that was asked is what is the thread on the nozzles that go on these printers so it's an M6 uh, I will also put a link to possibilities in the description I've already looked and Amazon, of course, offers a, a few options. It's really going to depend upon what are your reasons for wanting to change the nozzle. So far, I've got one spare, so I'm okay. I plan on trying out carbon fiber laced filament on this printer soon. So I understand that wears out the nozzles uh, very quickly. And as long as I'm able to get more, I really don't care. They're not expensive. And I just basically want to experiment before I start changing the nozzles. But anyways, like I said, it was a request and I appreciate that. So my intentions are to basically use a socket driver uh, to be able to unthread. That's a seven millimeter socket that the nozzle will fit into. So we're going to be heating this thing up to be able to change it. And of course, I don't want to burn my fingers and... You can see that the thread extends past the end of the socket, so that'll be great for being able to reinstall the nozzle once we're done as well, because we don't want to be touching it when it's hot. Okay, so the very first thing that I want to do is I want to raise the print head up. That'll make it easy for me to be able to access the underside. And there's one of two ways that you can do that. You can either go and release the axis in the controls, or you can use the controls themselves, the stepper motor, to drive the Z-axis up. And that's what I'm going to do. So, here we go. I come down to move axis. I'm going to go to the Z. Now, as you're raising this up, you can turn the, the knob a lot quicker than the actual head will move. You can actually get the numbers on here ahead of the print head. So, once you stop turning, it'll keep moving. So you really want to watch the number that goes here because the maximum height of this thing is 250 millimeters. And if you push it all the way up, you could possibly drive the top end uh, into the top frame and you're going to hear the stepper motor grinding as it's trying to push through the top frame. So right now I'm at 50 millimeters. I'm going up. You can see the head disappearing. I know this is so exciting watching it moving up, but we'll get there. I basically want to be able to get underneath, get underneath the print head easily. So once I hit about 200 millimeters, I'll stop. And so that's 150 that we just passed. And now we're getting, uh, we're at 200. I think I'm actually going to go to, I have to wait and let it catch up because I've stopped dialing and it's still moving so it's playing catch up uh, it just just caught up okay so i'm gonna go back to uh, dialing it up and raise it up so you can see there it is all right so i'm gonna go up some more all right so now that we've got it raised up the next thing that i'm gonna do is i know you can't see what i'm doing but I'm going to tell you that I'm on the main page of the printer in the controls and I'm going to go into the menu and I'm going to rotate down to the move axis and then I'm going to disable steppers. And so what that'll allow me to do is going to allow me to push this over to the middle over here and I'm going to take off this main cover. So there's one screw up the top over here on the opposite side. There's another one up the top on the opposite side. And then there's another screw from behind 
that's out the back here. So I'm just going to go around and I'm going to go remove those screws. And, you know, we're talking about a plastic casing here, so they're not going to be super tight or anything. So the top two screws are short. And they go into the body of the cover. And then the bottom screw is a little bit longer. And it's a plastic style of screw. So that's one. There we go for number two. Getting a beautiful view of my hand. Now I recommend that you have a, a, a tire wrap or a, or a piece of wire handy because this cover has two fans in it and you're going to want to be holding the cover up Oops. Well, you are going to be changing the nozzle. So there you go. So now the cover, I've got the cover loose. I'm being careful not to pull the wires uh, too hard. And I'm going to take a piece of wire and I'm going to lift the cover up. I'm just going to snake a piece of wire around the bracket that holds the spool and uh there we go okay so that gets everything up out of the way i may need to readjust the camera so that you can make sure that you can see what's going on so i just don't want it to drop down while i'm heating things up either to to remove the filament okay so there we go so now it's exposed so there's a little silicone sock under here and you're going to gently take that off. It has an opening. We don't want to tear it because we want to be able to put it back. And we're going to need to be grabbing a hold of that block to be able to remove the, the nozzle. So it's, uh, it's intact. It's got a little opening to be able to get around the wires there and it fits onto it beautifully. So I'm just going to set that down right here and let's see if we can get you a little close up just so that you can see what's what so i'm going to move in and so the fan that you see right up the top there that's the fan that's going to cool these fins uh whoops sorry okay so that's the fan that's going to cool these fins because you don't want the heat to be traveling up to the point where we're melting filament too far up in the reservoir you only want to be melting the filament down here in this hot block. So that's basically, this is, this little sock is a form of insulation to keep the heat in there. Then, if you look over here, just right there, that is the fan right behind it that is going to be cooling the filament that you're laying down. So it's surprising that I got this right before Christmas, and I'm sorry for, for wobbling around, but I got this right before Christmas, and I've used it a whole lot, and man, there's a lot of dust in there already, so I always keep some canned air around for electronics for being able to blow out some of the dust. The goal is to try to blow the dust outwards and not push it into the bearings of the fan, so I never blow straight in. I tend to blow across to try to move the uh, any dust out. So I'm going to just back up here and uh, I will continue in a moment. I'm just going to stabilize the camera and then I'll resume. All right, so now I am going to go back to the menu. And again, I know you can't see me, but basically I'm moving the menu to the prepare level and I'm going to preheat the PLA. So. I don't have any filament in the nozzle. Uh, this, when you preheat the PLA, it ends up heating up the build plate and the nozzle simultaneously, but I'm not wanting to run the stepper motor trying to move filament to get the nozzle hot. I want to heat it up to remove it. It's going to be a little bit awkward with the camera and uh, trying to reach around and remove the nozzle without burning myself, but I'm sure I can do it. And I unfortunately don't have a smaller wrench handy 
for being able to hold the block. But basically, I want to put a wrench on the block so that the block won't rotate while I'm trying to remove the nozzle. I'm just showing you while it's heating up. We just, we're going to have to wait a moment or two, but you can see I've just got a, uh, an adjustable wrench. I've come in at it sideways. I've grabbed the aluminum block, and then I will go in with my ratchet to be able to uh, remove the nozzle once it's hot. All right, so now I'm going to try out a method for being able to take the filament out of the uh, nozzle because we ideally we want it empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the prepare mode to load filament and then I'm going to go around the back and I'm going to pinch the drive so that it won't drive and I'm going to push and then I'm going to do a quick retraction because the goal here is to have as little melted filament in that nozzle area as possible. So here it goes. So now it's going to start pushing filament on its own. I'm going to come around the back. I'm pushing. I've opened the clip so it's not driving anymore. And I'm actually pushing it through. And now I'm going to pull back quickly. So I've just pulled out the filament in an attempt to be able to empty that nozzle before we go and remove it. It's up to temperature, 200 degrees. So now here I come in with my ratchet. I've got it set to tightening, so I'm going to switch it the other way. So now I'm going to line it up eventually. So now I've got a hold of the block so that it won't move and I am rotating. If you're looking at it, it's counterclockwise and there it is just, it has just cracked loose. So I'm unthreading it. I won't be touching it right away once I get it off because it is going to be very hot. Oops, there we go. So it's off. And wow, looks good and dirty on the end there. So that's the removal. All right, so I have taken the nozzle with a stiff bristled brush, not steel or anything like that. It's just a stiff bristle. I, I brushed it up a little bit, so it's not super clean. And my nozzle is still working well, so I'm just going to put it back. So I'm basically going to reverse the process. Uh, the only thing is, is that this time I'm going to use a screwdriver handle with the socket because I don't want to over tighten this thing. If you're using a ratchet handle, it'll give you way too much leverage. So I'm basically, it, it's cold now, so I'll just thread it in. And if you don't feel the thread right away, you turn the nozzle of the thread backwards until you feel it settle in, and then you'll rotate it clockwise to tighten it. So there we go. So I got it. I'm going to thread it in most of the way. I'm not going to tighten it yet because I'm going to heat things back up again before I do the final uh, tighten on it. So I'm just going back into the menu. I'm going into the prepare and I'm going to push the load filament button and wait for it to heat up. Then I will grab a hold of the block again so that I don't twist it and I will tighten up the uh, the nozzle back into position. Alright, so it's now back up to temperature, so I'm going to grab a hold of the block, and I got to warn you, I can't tell you how to be able to tell, but do not over tighten this thing, because that's a warm aluminum block now, and you could easily strip that thread. So that's why I've switched to the screwdriver from the ratchet handle. So that is now snug, I'm just going to make sure that the block is in position because it can move a little bit. Well, I'll grab it the other way just to be on the safe side because I don't want to damage the block. So there it is in position. So I am now going to let it cool down and put the cover back in place. 
once it's once the uh, the unit has cooled down before you put the cover back on you're going to want to put this back in place make sure that it's secure and then you're going to put the cover back on make sure the two short screws go up the top and the one long screw goes down the bottom be careful don't overdo it with the bottom screw it is only a plastic casing and the screw is made to thread into the plastic but don't strip it so as you can see that nozzle is 12 and a half millimeters long and as i mentioned already it's uh an m6 thread that's on that nozzle this is the spare 0 0.4 nozzle that came with the printer link to possibilities in the description thanks for watching